Good evening. Um, I want to share with you tonight about kind of a difficult topic, and that is um, what has been a long time issue in India, which is um, discrimination against the girl babies. And um, when we see beautiful faces like this, we see a beautiful little girl, a child of God. But what her society sees is a liability, someone who will always need extra protection, will never contribute financially, and will require a hefty dowry, which basically means she will always be an incredible burden to her family. Um, if a little boy is born, it's someone who will carry on the family name, carry on the business, the financial burden, carry on the legacy, and so the families rejoice. In fact, one woman said um, she was at her doctor's appointment getting the ultrasound to see how her baby was, and the doctor kept saying, you have a good baby, you have a good baby, and she thought he meant a healthy child, but when she gave birth, it was a son, and she realized the doctor is trying to tell her, you have a boy. Um, legally, the doctors cannot tell if it's a boy or a girl because they know it's such a problem. If a woman finds out she's pregnant with a girl, she will go and abort it. Um, and that's something that, you know, again, legally, like they've made it so that that's not even legal, but it, it's easy to bribe the doctors and you can't prove anything. And so it happens every single day um, that the, the abortions are happening continually simply because it's a girl child. The situation is not getting better, it is getting worse because ultrasounds are more and more available. Ab abortions are more readily available. And so it's, this is an issue that is only getting worse day by day. This is a billboard. Make your choice now. Spend a few hundred rupees now, have an abortion, and save a few hundred thousand rupees later, which would be the dowry. Imagine seeing this as you drive down the road, and this is the kind of thing, it, it's so common. Um, the problem is just great pressure from the family. So many reports of a woman who had girl baby after girl baby. Uh, one woman had six girls and killed them all because her family was pressuring her so much. When her seventh girl was born, she said no. She stood up for this child. She said, I'm going to let it live. And so they threw boiling water in her face, and they said, you are out of our family. They rejected her and her infant little girl. Another woman had twins, two girls. When they were born, the family said, get rid of them. And she stood up for them. She said, no, I'm going to keep them. And at first, they were angry. But gradually, the mother-in-law kept saying, here, let me come babysit. And she would come to take care of the children. And when the mother would come back, she would see them thrown down a set of stairs. All these things, they had tried to kill them. These are not village people. She and her whole family are doctors, professors, principals, teachers, all of them with degrees. We think of it as just um, the village people, the uneducated, but the reality is it's some of the most developed areas of India that this is happening among the educated people, among the wealthy, um, because the dowry, you know, they, they think it all, it, it's just the mindset that they're so stuck in. So we have an incredible, it, it's a crisis time. I mean, there's areas of India where there are 1,000 men and 400 girls. And so they're all of marriageable age. There is no one for them to marry. And so they're importing girls from other states nearby who live all their lives as outcasts and as slaves because they're outsiders. But still, when they give birth to a girl, they will say, kill her. And that's the situation that we're seeing in many places of India today. Um, so we need to pray for our missionaries to be able to minister, especially for our women missionaries serving in women fellowship to be able to combat. There's one sister who is counseling young girls, trying to teach them the right way. You know, when you're pregnant, when your family is pressuring you, you must stand strong. One new believer came to one of our pastor's wives and said, she said, I'm a midwife. And she said, how big is your God? How much can he forgive? With these hands, I have killed more children than I can count. How could he ever forgive me? And we need them to know. We need the people of India to know God can forgive that. We need them to know if they choose to stand up for their baby girls, that the church will stand behind them. One of our um, staff in the field gave birth to a child, and so all the other staff came to pray for and celebrate for this child who was born. And in the room next door was a girl who gave birth to a girl, her daughter. When her daughter was born, the whole family said, kill her, and she said, no, I will not. And so they left her. No one would pay the medical bills. No one would give her food. She had no blanket, no cloth, no diaper, nothing for her child. And so the staff left. 
the little shower that they were having for our own sister. They went shopping and they came and they said, here's food for you and your baby. They gave her what she would need to get started. In fact, our sister said, they gave her even more gifts than they gave me. <laughs> Praise the Lord that the church was there in that moment to help that sister. And please, we need to pray um, that we can continue to see that one hurting sister, that one who was pregnant and found out it's a girl and is scared and doesn't know what to do and knows if she gives birth, her father will be angry. And what will she do? Where can she go? Who will help her? Jesus will help her. So please, tonight, let us pray that the Lord will one by one change the hearts, change the mindset, bring healing so that they see these girls as whose they are, children, daughters of God, that boy or girl, all are precious in the sight of the Lord. So please, um, let's tonight spend some time interceding for this situation. Thank you so much. <laughs>